there, sports fans. This is Play Try TV, and I'm Kinito Henson. We're going to talk basketball in this episode, specifically the Maralco Bolts. They've got a new coach. Well, actually, not exactly a new coach, but someone who's new on the job at, at Maralco. He was an interim head coach at Maralco for a bit in the last Philippine Cup. Well, we're going to introduce him right now to you, the new head coach of the Maralco Bolts. Here he is, the one-time coach of the year of the PBA, already has won a PBA championship, no other than Luigi Trillo. Hi there, coach. Hey, Kinito. Hi. How are you to all the televiewers? Nice to see you. Good to <laughs> see you too, Coach Luigi. And nice to see you're in the saddle. Now, the second man we're going to introduce is someone whom I'm sure you're all familiar with because he had a stint with Gilas, both as an assistant coach and as an interim head coach. Remember, he did handle Gilas in one window of the FIBA qualifiers. So here he is. He's back in town. We welcome him back. We missed him. It's Coach Nenad Vucinic. Hey, Coach Nenad. Hello, hello, Kenito. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. Great to be yeah, back in he's... Manila. Coach Luigi, Coach Nenad looks like he's getting younger every time we see him. What? I wonder what his secret is. Coach he's Nenad, been, you got to show hanging out with us. He's been hanging out with us. So. <laughs> <laughs> The few uh, times he's dead, he's dead serious. He's dead I owe serious. you a dinner for this, can you call? <laughs> All right. I'll call, I'll call. Okay, now we've got two exceptional lightning bolt players to join us in this conversation. First off, we're going to call him the small man version of Miami's Bam Adebayo. He's a workhorse on the floor. He's full of energy. He gets his rebounds. He gets his points. But more than that, he sacrifices his body every time he's on the court. He dives for loose balls. He sets those mean screens. And here he is, Cliff Hodge. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, glad to be here. Um, <laughs> thanks for the support. <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks for joining up, uh, Cliff. And then last but not least, one of my favorite players. This guy, Coach Luigi, Coach Narat, and Cliff. I've seen this guy score bundles of points, buckets of points ever since he was in college, playing for UE. I've seen him score over 40 points. This guy is a dead shot. He's deadly. And uh, in the PBA, I think he's going to get a huge break from Coach Luigi. He started in the first two games for Moralco on the PBA on tour. Let's welcome Alvin Pasaol. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me and uh, inviting Coach uh, Nena, Coach Luigi, and Cliff. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. All right, Alvin. Alvin, ang bagong nickname ko para sa yo, Palakol. Alvin Palakol. <laughs> Parang talaga ng chat-chat. Okay, na yun? Okay, Coach, Coach Luigi. Palakol, Alvin. Well, okay. Let's go to Coach Luigi. And uh, we know that you're exactly not new as a head coach. You've coached Alaska to a championship. You were once coach of the year. But coming into Maralco, a team that has never won a PBA championship. But make no mistake about it. Last season, you guys went to the semifinals twice. You've been to four PBA finals, never won a championship. But Coach Luigi, what's going to turn it around for the Bolts this season and with you in the saddle? Well, well, first of all, I'm excited to to work with Coach Nenad. Um, obviously, he's such a humble guy, but behind the scenes, he's he's really helping our team a lot. I think the nice thing I've, I've noticed in our practices, and if you're asking me, hopefully that can translate to something good for us uh, in the next two conferences, is the I think the work we're putting in, uh, we're continuing the good that Coach Norman's done, but I think we're playing a little bit different now. Uh, obviously, the guys still have to learn and and uh, they have to get used to my voice, Coach Nenad's voice. But pleasantly surprised, and you know we we've we've had a couple of injuries at the start, but that's that's normal. <coughs> knowing the intensity we're playing, but we want to bring uh, a quicker pace. Uh, we want we want guys to read better. Uh, we want them to. To, to know what we're doing. Uh, it won't come early. Uh, we, this, this past preseason games, we've, it's evident that, you know, there's still a lot of work to do. But I think this preseason games gives us a chance to build, you know, leading forward to the October 15th opening. 
Well, let's talk about the preseason games. This is called the PBA on tour so far. Baralco's record is one and one. You guys beat Northport 97-89, lost to Phoenix 100-93. Coach Nenad, in that loss to Phoenix, I noticed that you guys outshot Phoenix from the floor. You had 98 field goal attempts. They only had 72. That's a differential of 26 field goal attempts. You also had more assists 24 to 19, but the big disparity was in free throws. They had they were 31 out of 45 from the line. You guys were 11 out of 23. Free throws made a difference in that game. What do you think, Coach Nenad? Look, we spoke uh, about this after the game and also in the meeting, analyzing analyzing the game. Um, we are work in progress. You know, when you look at when when you look at that game, um, you are absolutely right. You know, our fouling and putting them on the line uh, did make a huge difference. You know, but saying that, you know, we also shot the ball poorly, uh, and we had a lot of open shots. You know, and they played zone day five. 35 minutes off, off, off the off the 48th and uh, and you know when you don't hit the shots you know against the zone you know it's going to be a hard yard but saying that there's a lot of positive things um, that we did in that game um, of, you know we had so many more possessions and that's a tribute to our offensive rebounding um, and also uh, that we managed to to keep the turnovers right down if you look at our assist to ratio, uh, assist to turnover ratio was very high as well. So it's just you know we played we played good. We're a long way to go. We need months, you know, after um, a long time, you know, with Coach Norman, who is by the way still in our staff and 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 is going to be a great contributor, continue to be a great contributor to the program. We have uh, we we have you know a lot of lot of work to be to be done because as soon as you change the coaching staff and as soon as you change the system and everything it does require a lot, a lot of time but the, the good thing is the players are very very responsive yes I, I understand that they are very responsive to the new changes but coach Nada, you mentioned the assist to turnover ratio in that loss to phoenix you guys had an assist to turnover ratio of 24 to 8 i mean that's that's a phenomenal number coach Nenad. but uh i just also want to ask you coach about your coaching experience. You're a um, five-time coach of the year in the New Zealand League. You've won championships in New Zealand, in Lebanon, in uh, Estonia. You've coached in Italy. You've coached in Turkey. But you seem to have fallen in love with the Philippines, despite your coaching all over the world. What makes the Philippines so special in your heart, Coach Nenad? Look, uh, it's I came to Philippines uh, uh, accidentally, you know, my good friend there, Baldwin, was uh, a coach here for, for a long, long time. He invited me to the coaching clinic and the first vibe that I got, it was a, my first time, it was about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. First time, you know, that I had uh, uh, landed in, in Philippines, in Manila, you know, it was a good vibe of, you know, good people, friendly people, safe place and enormous passion for basketball. And... Uh, and, you know, we worked, you know, obviously I worked, you know, in, in different countries, you know, in the last few years, Japan, China, Italy. Uh, but, you know, on, on the invitation from, from Coach Deb, who was a national program director um, at the time, you know, I came to, to, to be part of the Gilas. And also then uh, with our boss MVP, you know, I joined Meralco as well. And I really had great time, great people, um, good team, um, Players very responsive, wanting to learn, uh, playing honest, uh, playing hard. Um, Philippines, you know, with the passion. Uh, obviously, also Manila, it's a nice city. You've got everything that you need here. Beaches are very close by. I mean, what else do you need in life? Well, that's great. That's great news. And Cliff, let's talk to you about the changes at Maralco. New coach and Coach Luigi, and then... I understand with Coach Narad, your practices have been super intense. But you're used to all that intensity, Cliff. What do you like about these changes? Uh, I'm not usually uh, – I'm not used to the intensity uh, as before. <laughs> I mean, our practice were a little bit easier for sure. But I think the intensity will definitely make us better. Um, it's a lot of learning. Um, different uh, system, different ideas, you know. And um, as you can tell, we're a work in progress. But um, all the guys are ready to put in the work. Uh, we're learning. 
So that's always good when you're learning uh, new stuff and new ideas. And uh, we're just taking it with a grain of salt and um, using this uh, preseason as just building, um, not looking at the scores per se. Uh, we want to win everything, but we also just want to get better and learn the system. And then come uh, October, we'll be ready to go. Oh, Cliff, you're missing some pieces in the PBA on tour. Aaron Black not playing, Chris Newsom, Chris Banquero. Yeah. And yeah. we don't know when they're coming back. I think Coach Luigi will ask you, will ask you about that uh, later on. But you've got some new guys. Uh, you've got Jeffrey Mandai, who's trying out for your team. And uh, let's not forget Norbert Torres. What about these new pieces? Um, how are you gelling? And what do you think of the chemistry? Uh, right now, you, you can tell that uh, that we don't know. We're not all on the same page yet. But, I mean, they're both new. So um, it's going to take a little bit of gelling, like you said, uh, in practice. And um, we've only had maybe two weeks of practice. So where it's a new system and everything. But those guys are all hard workers, and um, they're going to get it. So uh, the wins will, will come for sure. But, um, yeah, with the new guys, they're uh, great pieces. Jeff's a really good uh, point guard, and he's pushing the pace especially with all of our guards out right now. A lot of guys are, uh, that usually don't get a lot of playing time finally have a chance to prove that uh, they have something to, they can bring something to the table. So, um, like, I'm excited with a lot of the guys that, um, that that we got right now that usually don't get a lot of playing time. Now there's some time to step up and show what they got. And um, they can help us out. So I'm excited. And uh, Torres is huge. Um, he's been playing uh, really well for us so far, and he's only been – on our team for a few days, and uh, I know that he's going to be a big piece of us finally winning the championship. Uh, Pag-usapan naman natin yung uh, pagbabagong changes sa Maralco with Alvin Pasaol. Alvin, starter ka for the last uh, two games sa uh, PBA on tour for Maralco. First game mo, 8.7 assists. Mukhang, uh, mukhang praktisado ngayon yung sharing the ball. Uh, alam naman natin, Alvin, that uh, ever since you were in college, you're not only a great shooter, but you also can pass the ball more than that, you're probably one of the best rebounding guards or small forwards in the league. Alvin, kumusta naman at uh, yung adjustment mo sa mga pagbabago ng coaching changes sa Maralco? Uh, uh, right now, because, uh, no, coach, uh, sir, it's too hard because, yeah, uh, a lot of changes, uh, coaching staff, uh, some players, but, uh, we keep on learning for a uh, new system with Coach Nenad, but it's a lot of uh, hard, hard work to do more, uh, passing, uh, uh, scoring. Uh, that's why uh, kailangan, ano, uh, kailangan, no, sorry, uh, gawin namin lahat, uh, put, put work on the practice, back to uh, drawing board, uh, my execution namin. Alvin, kausap ko si Meralco Governor Attorney Bill Pamintuan. At uh, sabi niya, um, you're one of his top players and he's excited about what you can bring sa darating na season. But Alvin, napanggit ni Attorney Bill sa akin na sa kontrata mo, merong uh, very interesting clause about yung weight. Ano nga yun? Uh, hindi ko masyadong naintindihan kung ano yung sinasabi niya. Alvin, uh, ano nga yun? Mabibiya ka ng fine kung let's say over a certain number of pounds alvin uh, uh i have a no a task for uh coach nenad uh for my weight loss so okay. pag, so hindi ko po maabot yung uh weight na yon uh i cannot play for either ano hanggang matapos ko po yung weight loss ko for task for coach nenad ano yon ano limit noon uh um, 108, 108, 108 One? sa weight. Oh, 108 kilos. Yes po. Okay, yun ang limit mo. Nasaan ka na ngayon, Alvin? Uh, last week, uh, I thought na uh, ano na, uh, I have lost weight na. Pero it's the same pa rin po eh. Uh, I've controlled myself to ano, uh, uh -huh. eating. But right now, I'm to so much serious about that for the okay. uh, task to take, to take uh, the task of Coach Nenad. Ilan ang pounds ang na nawala sa'yo, Alvin? He's 105. 105. 105. He's 105 now, okay. 105. <laughs> <laughs> Sabi ni Coach Nenad, bawal daw ang chips. 
He, he's not <laughs> eating chips anymore. Coach Luis. Oh, cheap days. Cheap days. Well, Coach Luigi, no. uh, you've had a wonderful experience at Alaska. And also, when you stepped in for Coach Norman, you know, he, he had a family obligation back in the States. But you coached Meralco to a spectacular run in the Philippine Cup. Your record total was 6-3. and three, And you guided Meralco to beat Barangay Nebo in the quarterfinals in the last Philippine Cup. Tell us about that experience. And did that kind of boost your confidence that coming into the saddle you'll be fine with the Morocco Bolts. You know, Kinita, to be honest, I didn't see myself coaching. It just came as a, you know, as an emergency with Coach Norman. And our second guy in charge, our, uh, our head assistant was Coach Ronnie Magsano, right? But I think certain things happened and I was tasked to do it. Um, you know, it was, it was a nice experience. We all collectively brought our minds together. Um, I also think that the, the players had something to prove thinking that you know i think it was a it was a turning point for our team because we hadn't beaten hinebra until that series um and it, it was it even if it was a best of three this that series was significant for us because we kind of got the monkeys off our back and you know it was, it was a hard series it wasn't something that came easy we won the first game the second game, I remember, was a close one. The last five minutes, we did not play uh, good defense. They were able to to get that one. And then the third game, I remember we went, we had a big lead, and and Coach Tim went with that small lineup uh, that gave us uh, a bit of problems. But somehow, you know, the guys trusted themselves, and I think that's one thing that moving forward our team has to do, right? I think. Everybody we put inside, we had faith in. Uh, it came down to that handoff of Nu giving that to Raymond Almazan to hit that three-point shot. And then, you know, Cliff has been the backbone of, of our franchise ever since defensively. He got that offensive foul from Scotty. And and that, that was a turning point for us because it made us realize, I think, that, you know, Hinebra is beatable. And, you know, we, we know what we're going up against now uh he never has gotten even deeper they've gotten malons and gray you have teams like uh talking tech san miguel uh the heavyweights that have gotten also younger you know you have a cj and then c sub run the alpha san miguel and talking tech has also added there and and that's why they've, they've they've been there but with that being said we're happy with the lineup we have uh we believe in the guys obviously we're, we're excited about the draft in the eighth but i think we have to build with what we have and and the guys are working hard. They're, you know, it's it's not only new to them. This thing of me coaching with Coach Nenad, it's it's something new, and it's it's gonna take some time for us to really get it right. There there are no egos here. I've I've, I've uh, been observing Coach Nenad. He's not about anything about that as long as we get the wins. And he's he's also been very helpful to me because you know great leaders bring out leaders all over. And he's he's told me to give my opinion every time. Uh, with everything that he's, you know, I know he's a humble guy. I just want to talk about his achievements. But even if in practice I have something to say, he's lent an ear, and he allows me to to develop and help him out. And I think this this partnership and and collectively with the coaching staff will take some time. But we we are working hard. We're open minded, and I think when it starts from from the top, the, the players see it. And I think when they see that, they also work hard. So uh, I'm pleased with the practices. They've been tough. But but I think this is the way to go. And, and uh, if I, if I look at, um, I've always said this about Converge. Converge hasn't figured it out yet. But the way they practice, they're changing the way the game is played. I, I think teams are playing faster. Obviously, in a series, it slows down. But... Uh, I think I like the pace. In fact, in our in our last game, Kinito, you know, we shot mm -hmm. a lot. You were you're right. We we shot much yeah. more than them. I look at what we're doing in practice. We're not taking days off, so that's going to affect the way we we play in the exhibition games. But we're not about winning at all costs, right? We want them a bit ruffled. We want them a little bit out of their comfort space. We want them a little bit tired, and we want to see them and how they'll respond in the game. So we we know we know that 
uh, there's one side that we're missing three point shots because some of the guys are tired. Uh, that's one side. Another side is we have four new guys. You have uh, Jeff, who's there, and I. You have Frankie, who hasn't seen the court. Uh, you you have you have guys like Toto, even Alvin. The last two conferences, uh, he didn't really see the court. He saw the court in the all Filipino a bit with me, but these guys have to grow. And they're making mistakes, and we 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 appreciate that. We relish that. Uh, we we're observant of that, and we are making um, we're putting a video up. We're we're getting detailed in practice. We're putting them in situations where they can get used to it. But this is this is something that we have to go through because some of the other guys are not there right now. We have we have injuries. Well, Coach Luigi, you talked earlier about that turnaround when you beat Barangay Nebra in your first ever playoff series. What was it like coaching against your mentor, Coach Tim Cohn? Well, anytime you get a chance to uh, to coach against someone you've worked with for a long time, he, he means, you know, guys, I've worked, I've worked with Coach Norman a long time. He's also a mentor. I, I cherish Coach Nena now, but working with Tim, obviously we had something there, you know, and... and to come out and to honor him and to to try to get get the guys ready and to play our hearts out to me that was everything right and and um, it it was it was significant uh, not only in the wins but for me because it's it was it was beating somebody you lose, you used to look up to or you still do you know I mean watching him mm -hmm. every day and the way he did things so um, it's something but. You know, I know there are going to be times again. This is going to happen, and I'm excited. I, I, we want the challenge. We 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 like that underdog tag. Uh, we want to see more rivalries like this. In fact, I noticed when it was Miralco Hinebra, that gym was always packed in the finals. So yes, you know, I had the rivalry. We want to just be in the finals, whoever it is. But if it's, <laughs> if it's Ginebra, we want that challenge. Yeah. Well, Coach Nenad, talking about challenges. Okay, in the PBA on tour. The PBA has introduced the head coach challenge. Do you like this uh, innovation of the PBA? You want to have it carried over to the next season? Right now, each head coach has one coaching challenge available for every half. But my understanding is perhaps when the new season comes, it'll be reduced to just one coaching challenge per game. What do you think about this innovation, Coach Nenad? It's, uh, and there, there is certainly a lot of positives about it those uh, uh, challenges because, you know, in the end, we want the calls to be right calls. And uh, to give credit to the referees, you know, it's easy, as, easy for us to see after the replay whether the call was right or not. They have to do it in the real time. And that's sometimes difficult and that's why they make mistakes. And uh, this is, you know, a step towards having the calls be good. But really, when, when you think about it, one challenge in a half is nothing, really. Um, because uh, uh, you really need to save that for the end of the game in case there is a disputed call at the end of the game uh, that you can actually throw the challenge. And yes, you're going to lose the timeout if you don't challenge. Um, but uh, on the other hand, you know, you cannot have coaches challenging every time they think it's a wrong call, you know, it would be a circus. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult, you know, and, and, and you know, Europe has been through this for, for quite a while, you know, with those challenges. I think it it, it, it would be good if it's um, the way I would do it uh, is that we have like a third referee or fourth referee over there and that correctable errors can be corrected without the challenge from the coaches. You know, if, uh, if the fourth referee see that there is something uh, that it was a wrong call, okay, that he, he intervenes and, 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 and get the right call as, as it was. I think that would have been a even fairer. But with this, you know, you know, one challenge is good, you know, especially if you keep it till the end of the game and there is a dispute yeah. call in a close game in the last minute, you know, you can use it and you can make a difference between winning and losing. Well, Coach Nenad, I want to ask you uh, about the Meraldo's games in the, on tour. One guy who has gotten a tremendous amount of exposure is Anjo Karam. And that's really because Aaron's not playing, News is not playing, Banquero's not there. 
but he's averaging, uh, I want to check out his stats. He's averaging like 17 points and 36 minutes a game for someone who comes off the bench to play spot minutes. Um, do you like this idea of the on tour where you get uh, a lot of playing time for guys who otherwise would not be getting this playing time? Coach Nenad. Well, to be honest, I mean, let's say if we did, if uh, Newsom wasn't in a, in the national team, if Aaron wasn't in a national team, if uh, Banquero was was uh, healthy, if Maliksi it was healthy in the last game, uh, they would play. They would play. So we would not uh, have the opportunity that much get our depth, okay, for the team. And this is an ideal situation. For, for for us, I think uh, that with with the fact that we don't have the guys that are playing a lot of minutes usually, we can now put guys like Anjo and um, guys like Alvin, guys like Toto, you know, and 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 they will come and play, and they will be better and better. I guarantee you, as the time goes on, and that gives us you know a lot, lot more depth than we did have. Um, and that's really an opportunity for us to develop the depth. And uh, it, it, it's, you know, for me, it's ideal. You know, the win or loss record in, in this, you know, it, for me, it really doesn't matter. Although we want to win every game and we will try to win every game. But it's much more valuable for us to, to, to give some guys a chance uh, to prove that they can play. Um, and if you take, for example, two conferences ago, I wasn't here uh, for Meralco. And we didn't make the playoffs. You know, we had injuries. Newsom was injured. The Cliff had injuries as well. And and we struggled. Okay. And this gives us a chance now that in case we do have an injury, that we're not going to drop as much as we did with those injuries in, in that particular conference. Yeah, showing a lot of good depth. Uh, Cliff, you work underneath the boards. You've worked very well with Raymond Almazan. Um, Raynel Hugnaten used to be there. He's now part of your coaching staff. Now you've got Norbert Torres helping out off the boards. He can also hit the outside shot. How do you like working with these big guys? You've got Toto Jose also, who's a, who's a big guy who can hit the outside shot. How do you like playing with these big guys? Uh, yeah, uh, I love it. It makes my it makes my job a lot easier if uh, <laughs> I have another guy helping me out. Um, no, I bet I you they'll say the same about you. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I love all the, the additions and um, the time that we get right now in this uh, PBA preseason uh, on tour is is super valuable to all of us. Um, Norbert, Raymond, me, and uh, sorry, and uh, and Toto. Toto, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, because um, uh, you know when. Usually there's going to be an import conference. And then when an import conference comes, we're more of a, you know, it's one position taken away from all of us. So we can rely on each one of us for valuable minutes while uh, the import is getting all the minutes. Then it's going to even be better for us. So we just need to, to learn and trust each other. And uh, whoever's on the playing court is going to be good and be able to win for us. So this is well, great. talking about think, imports, Cliff. Talking mm -hmm. about imports, you're actually the designated import stopper of the yeah. team. Can mm -hmm. you tell us which import has had the most impact on you in terms of getting under your skin? Who is the guy? Uh, Can yeah. you reveal who that import is? The guy who's really gotten your goat so much. Um, that's tough. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like most of the imports are nice guys off the court. Off the court. Also, even on the court, most of them are pretty nice also. So, I mean, yeah. I don't really get into it with any of them. Um, the hardest probably to guard would probably be, like, uh, Jefferson was hard. Um, Brownlee, of course, is hard. Uh, but, I mean, the hardest for me ever would probably be my own teammate, uh, uh, AD. In practice, there was no way I could stop him. It was impossible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so well, before we go back to Alvin Pasol, I want to ask Coach Luigi. Uh, Cliff mentioned Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I heard that he was your first choice as import for the last Governor's Cup, but he wasn't available. And so you went uh, to another route. Is that true? Can you confirm that, Coach Luigi? Well, he was, he was one of the imports we were considering, but the timing wasn't right. It's like, you know, you want to 
bring him in and then you start winning some games. But uh, I, I, I like I like guys who can defend. I think he brings a lot of versatility. And I, I, I think that he may not uh, make his shots, but he's smart enough not to settle for outside shots. And I think he was he's a perfect guy to have against Brownlee because Brownlee operates outside. So, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, I think it fell into the right place with Talk and Tex. I think we were in a winning streak when that happened. And then, the ne- lo and behold, next thing we know, he's already with Talk and Tex. And yeah. I, 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 I truly believe if, if, we, if we had him also, they're both great. KJ is great in his own way offensively. But mm-hmm. I, I don't think Talk and Tex would have won without uh, Hollis Jefferson. The, the import before that was more of a scorer. And when you have a guy who scores so much, the other guys don't feel involved, you know. And uh, it takes a great group of guys to let that guy score, right? But I think when you look at the what Talk and Text had, you have guys who can score. You have Mikey Williams, you have J- uh, Jason Castro, you have Paul Goy. So you need somebody to do the dirty work. And guys, guy, he's he's hard to defend because he's a he's a he played the power forward here, but he's really a two guard. He was guarding guys like James Harden, LeBron James. So when you have a guy that quick, no way does your the big here stand a chance of guarding him, right? And he, well, what really impressed me was uh, I heard some things about him overseas, but uh, I think because of the minutes he got here, uh, he was more coachable. You know, sometimes when you're not being played, or sometimes you're competitor, you're not you're not given. Uh, certain things by the coach, you can be a problem at times. And I think that's what I heard from him before. Uh, just hearsay overseas, right? In Korea, in the in the NBA. But here, because his his minutes were significantly bigger, he had a bigger role. And I think because of what he 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 came from in the in the in the Korean league, the KBL, the KBL, he wasn't being used. Uh, that team needed more of a big man. So the big man import was being used. So you come into that situation where you're a little bit more, you know, you've got some humble pie, you have more humility, you want to prove yourself. And then uh, it was a challenge to him. And then the the thing there was they allowed him to play. They allowed him to play. They allowed him his minutes. I, I think the coaching staff also did a good job of being patient by him uh, talking back or, or – uh, Creating that voice, he wanted to be heard, right? And uh, he's he's an he's an import to reckon with, that's for sure. Oh, back to Alvin. Alvin, dati naging three x three player ka. Now you're settled in as a five on five player. Um, malaking pagbabago ba yon? And now that you're given a lot of opportunities, ni Coach Luigi, um, ano ma asahan ng mga fans mo na makikita nila kay Alvin Pasaol? Uh... The per, uh, first place are uh, it's too hard because uh, I played troops like two years. Not uh, played five on five. We, we played overseas every time with three x three. So the, the difference is the ball, like the pace, and sure, ano po uh, conditioning uh, because of the pandemic. Like yun nang yare. So I I get in part of the pandemic. Uh, then. Nasa naman lang ako si Luigi sa akin is every time to practice, uh, go hard and every game, like, give all, all my best to help the team. Well, um, I, I, I can expect a lot of big things from Alvin Pasaol in the coming seasons. And, uh, well, before we wrap up this uh, very interesting interview, Coach Luigi, we want to give you a chance to uh, make a shout out to all the Morocco fans. Maybe you can uh, give them an idea of what to expect from the Bolts this coming season. Yeah, well, first of all, sa lahat ng mga Meralco fans, maraming maraming salamat. We thank you so much for being there. Uh, even in our two preseason games, we saw them right in the first row. So, you know, we appreciate you. Uh, we thank you. Uh, you know, we're blessed to be on the court uh, playing this game, coaching this game for you guys. And alam namin yon, and we we take this to heart. No? And uh, we want we want to make sure that we're going 100% all the time. Uh, the team has been working hard and will continue to work hard. Uh, we'll continue to be open-minded to improving. I have faith in the guys I have. I have faith in our coaching staff uh, uh, from Coach Nenad all the way down. 
um, and and we'll keep on improving. And with with that being said, we're we're excited to add pieces if we can as well. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo and. Hopefully we can see you not only on the October 15th, but pati dito sa exhibition games. It's it's free. It's aircon there. Uh, we'd love to see you sa games. And Coach Nenad, uh, again, uh, it's always great to talk to you. You're such a humble guy. You never want to talk about your uh, um, your distant past, as you were saying. But we all know what you're capable of, and we're uh, we're excited to see you back uh, in the game here in the PBA. Um, Coach Nenad, if you can just uh, Invite all your fans, all the Morocco fans out there to continue supporting you and your crusade to give uh, Morocco its first championship. Yeah, um, thank you, Morocco fans, for, for accepting me as well as a part of the Morocco Bolts. And uh, I, I, I just can't wait uh, to put in the work. You know, we are putting in the work. Uh, you have to be a little bit patient, you know, with... Um, with how we play and uh, we have to go backwards because before we start going forwards and uh, and uh, I just invite you to come and support us uh, in the good and the bad times as well and uh, these guys, players and coaching staff really deserve that. Thanks very much, Coach Nerad. Cliff, some parting shots uh, from you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Morocco fans uh, and PBA fans. Uh, we're doing this PBA on tour just for you guys. Uh, it's free. Uh, come check us out. Come check out some of the new guys that uh, are getting another chance. And uh, we continue to play hard and give you guys a great show. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Cliff. And Alvin, ano masasabi mo naman? Uh, thank you po sa lahat ng Meralco fans, sa lahat ng support nyo. Uh, sana uh, mapanood, uh, mapanood niyo po kami sa lahat ng mga games namin sa PBA, on tour, at saka sa darating na season. Okay, maraming maraming salamat and thanks very much the Morocco organization for making this interview happen. We want to thank Coach Luigi, Coach Nenad, Cliff and Alvin Pasol. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo lahat and we'll see you at the games. Thanks for joining Play It Right TV. Thanks guys. Thank you. Oh wait, jump on nagtatapos ang ating uh, special episode on the Morocco Bolts with a new head coach in Luigi Trillo. A lot of new things happening. They've got new players. Jeffrey Manday, nakuha na nila. Nakuha din si uh, Norbert Torres. And uh, some changes in the coaching staff. But uh, I think the character of Maralco will remain lightning, um, will remain strong. And we're hoping for big things to come from the Maralco Bolts. At uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood and staying with us here on Play Try TV. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The po si Kinito Hanson. Maraming salamat and see you again soon on Play Try TV.